Hey everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi, Untold Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys is brought to you in partnership with Sagicor. Buying a home? Score big with a Sagicor Bank Mortgage. It's easy. Find your property, apply for your Sagicor Bank Mortgage, get your keys in no time, and you're home! MasterCard. Make online purchases in a safe way with Debit MasterCard. Let the passion of football find you everywhere. MasterCard. Start something priceless. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life. The Maroons are an indigenous people with a sovereign republic predating the British Treaty. He is the head of the cockpit country. His Excellency Chief Richard Curry. I am in the presence of royalty, actually. It is my distinguished pleasure to have you here, Chief Curry. Um, I actually feel very privileged because you don't often leave the state of Akompong, but you ventured to come and sit with me here today. Um, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate that. You're I welcome. do. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm going to start where you probably least would have expected me to, but what does it truly feel like to sit here as the chief of the state of Akampong? So, uh, I must say it's a pleasure and it's an honor to serve, you know, the people of the territory. Um, it's actually wider than Akampong, say the state of Cockpit, Cockpit country. country. yeah. Um, so ancestral lands and, you know, we carry a rich heritage, a rich history, um, a lot that has gone untold you know, and we yet pride ourselves so much on who we are. So mm -hmm. I represent um, the legacy of a people. And for that, I'm proud and truly grateful. It is actually one of the richest legacies of our nation, truth be told. I don't think a single one of us in Jamaica or in the diaspora has been raised not to understand what it is to be a Maroon and the significance of the Maroons to um, our existence as a people. But for those who may not know, um, tell us a little bit about why the Maroons are so critically important to our history. Well, one must first understand who are the so-called Maroons. Right. You know, um, there have been many stories told uh, about who the Maroons are. Um, the Maroons are a combination of the first peoples of the land, the Tainos, the Arawaks, right? That's who we were and who we are. Over time, throughout slavery, where we had many uprisings, many slaves would have left plantations and they fled to the hills because that's where they thought was the safest place mm, for hiding right. and refuge. They encountered the locals who were our ancestors, who took them in, right, gave them a home. And over time, our numbers amalgamated, our families joined, mm. and we were labeled maroon. Because that's not a term we called ourselves. Ah. That was a term given to us I never by, knew the, that. by the colonials. Hmm. So there's a lot of confusion as to the identity of the maroons. Right. And when it comes to the argument of sovereignty and, you know, the rights of the Maroons, this is where it starts to get a little bit gray for some people. Right. Um, to be honest, we haven't asked ourselves um, the real questions, right? Um, who did the, the, the Spanish come here and see? Who did they bring here as the first set of slaves, mm. right? Who then came uh, subsequent to that? Uh, was the British and when they overthrew the Spanish it was said that a lot of these um, slaves would have fled the plantations and made settlements into the hills. I would want to correct or add to that um, rhetoric that 
this island was settled long before Columbus came. Mm. We were conducting trade. We were a nation that were traveling the seas with our brothers, with our sisters. There's Kodja Island in the, in the Florida Keys. You know of it, right? I do know of it. Okay. And we have records of Nani being in Florida, right? In South America, right? So we had ships. We were, we were merchants. We were businessmen. We were doing business. The island and its geographic positioning as it stands right now provided the same benefit that we are seeing now yes. they would have saw then. Right. The only people who could have given refuge to a runaway um, slave would have been those who knew the terrain and could actually provide a safe haven for them. That's right. It was said, it was documented in history. You know, um, the prime minister himself even said it in one speech that the cockpit countries where the, 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 the British never, ever ventured, they could never get past um, the, the walls of defense of the Maroons because the Maroons were fierce warriors. Mm. We weren't just regular people, right? It was a, a combination of tribal peoples right. who stood together to defend the land against invasion, right? And against um, tyranny, which was coming by the arms of the colonizers. So our history, knowledge of who we are, then gives us a better understanding why it is that we're important. Because then one would say, oh, but um, Jamaica is still under the British crown. But there still is the set of people who fought and won that war still here. Right now. And we didn't pass that land. So It almost begs the question, why isn't that lesson taught? You know what I mean? Why isn't that narrative understood in, in the depth with which it should be understood? It's almost as though understanding that empowers a people beyond what they would like them to be empowered to and makes them a little less susceptible to being manipulated and led because, you know, here came the saviour as a colonizer who could help us. And I mean, let me not express too much of my perspective <laughs> on it, but it's... I'd love your perspective on it. We're, free, we're, we're a fear-driven society, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And over time, the history has taught us a certain way or had given us a, a certain understanding um, of the, the epilogues, you know, the stories that took place um, that transcended to us being here and being who we are today. Yeah. Why are the Maroons where they are today? For me, it's been a lack of leadership, one. Two, it's been years and years of undermining misrepresentation and total deceit on behalf of others who claim to represent us, mm, right? Okay. As a result, we weren't able to rebuild after that war. Got you. We were essentially marooned mm. to the hills. <laughs> right. Cut off. Right. Right. So we now were seen as these vagabonds who would not conform. Right. Right. And it's as if the story was, we leave them to the land and let them do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. No interference. Right. The challenge is we are now in a landlocked situation. That's right. So even if we were to explore uh, our identity through commerce, through trade, if we were to explore our rights and, and utilize our freedom of rights, freedom to movement, freedom of identity, then it begs for the incorporation of higher level discussions to provide or facilitate or act as facilitator right right to the exercise of the freedom that mm. we know mm -hmm. we have so from day one my posture has been let's get to talking let's get to yeah. hammering out what needs to happen and how right. we move forward. Right. We need understandings as to how 
the Maroon government relates to the government of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. With those understandings, it clears a lot of the gray um, areas. Yes. It facilitates cooperativeness. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. The police, they suffer because when they come into the territory, they do not understand how to operate or how to, to move about and right. carry out their business. Now, we want to cooperate and work with the law enforcement right. because as a leader, that's a part of my oh. duty to also serve and protect, right? Mm. So therefore, the dialogue between myself and law enforcement has to be an ongoing <clears throat> one. That's right. And not one that pretty much is a subjective one because I did not subject myself to the laws of that state. That's right. So what we need to understand is now let's have conversations of mutual respect and mutual regard that can yield mutual benefit, mm. right? And for us, that's all that we need. Let's be facilitators, right? It doesn't need to be a headbutting thing and right. I'm bigger and powerful than you or no. I find in general, the world could use a lot more of that. I feel, if I, I feel even us as a people could use a lot more of that type of dialogue and conversation versus this, you know, being told what should happen and how it should go and so on and so forth. Because I think that there is a, there's a lot of room for much more inclusivity and growth and advancement if we hear each other out. Correct. You know, a lot more room for that. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned a while ago about the leadership of the Maroons. And I want to know more about the current leader. That would be you. <laughs> <laughs> so who is Chief Richard Curry? Who is this man? Where were you born? Where are you from? What is your story? So, all right. So I'm, I'm from a compound, right? Born um, in a compound. Well, not physically born in a compound, mm -hmm. but... Uh, my mom and dad are from Maroon Territories. My dad is from Akompong. My mom is from Beth Salem, which is just down the road. And um, I, I was born at the University Hospital and um, raised in Akompong until I left, I think it was at age six or seven. Okay. And we went to another um, district in St. Elizabeth called Goshen. Yeah. That was just out of Santa Cruz heading towards Gotas. That's right. Right. And... Through, through my younger years, I attended the, the Santa Cruz Prep School. Okay. And, you know, met most of my life, my lifelong friends there. Uh-huh. And left, went to Monroe College. Oh, I'm sorry. I said what now? <laughs> I know you guys are like a whole... <laughs> Bubba Skiwat and Dala oh! Ala Skiwat. <laughs> <laughs> it's that right <laughs> That's it for me. Bobo Skiwat and Tana Blessings to my Monroe family. Yes, I love, yes. I actually love how you guys are. You guys definitely are a brotherhood. It's a brotherhood. That's what it is. Yes. That's what it is. Each one help one, you know? And we, 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 um, we, we gelled, you know, life was good um, up until my father passed hmm. at the age of seven. Um, he died in a, um, from a car accident. And, oh. you know, that turned our world upside down, be it my mom and my other siblings, my two sisters uh, who were after me. And then my brother was still in the in tummy, tummy at that time. And you know, so wow. it was that really rough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, it was really rough. You know, my mom was a warrior. You know, I have... Um, family members who chipped in at the time to help cushion and balance, you know, the situation. And, you know, going through Monroe itself was an awakening period for me yes. because it was in that time I realized that as the eldest, you know, I had to step up to certain responsibilities. And yeah. my sisters and my brother, you know, were primary amongst those things, you know. Um, my mom left to, you know, try and make better yeah. of what was now a single mom situation. And she, you know, has toiled and worked, you know, relentlessly to ensure that I never dropped out of Monroe. Mm. Um, you know, my sisters um, would have similar or better education. Um, likewise, my brother. So, uh, you know, life was very turbulent and I had to grow up very quickly, 
from an early age. So I was cooking, cleaning, mm -hmm. washing, all them things from an early age, you know. And um, as I say, in college, you know, I met good friends. You know, we all came from different backgrounds and everybody provided a shoulder for everybody else mm -hmm. in different circumstances. So that brotherhood is kind of why you see carry through yes. with the Monroe thing, which would be really why everybody's so close to everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, after that, um, I studied a business. I went to UTEC and studied accounting and international business. Now, those four years, you know, were another, um, I say, <laughs> grooming, you know, of... If Halls <laughs> could talk. <laughs> <laughs> grooming of, of the order but <laughs> I mean you know I stayed on hall for four years maybe one of those years I stayed on on um, UWE mm -hmm. on a hall at UWE even though I was going to UTEC uh -huh. you know brotherhood Hence, if halls could talk <laughs> the brotherhoods you know the brotherhoods you know the friendship um, which you know helped me through because it wasn't easy getting a space on hall so the right. first year I partly was you know, operating out of another bridging room right. who live on you, you know, until I got in and in, you know, those four years culminated into something very special, you know. Um, a lot of people who came through in my year, very special, you know, you see and came through at that time, you know, Asafa was there at that time. So many other people were there, very, you know, the energy in the yes. place at that time was just, yeah, right, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was a footballer, so I was playing for the university at the time. But I wish I could have did, you know, excel further in the football because, you know, that was a dream of mine way back. You know, it's never too late. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think the boys could use some support right yeah, now. Yeah, let me tell you something. I, 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 give them, I give them a solid, you know, support from the stands, yeah. you know. But what position did you play? Um, I was a defender, right? But I always thought of myself as a midfielder. But um, I was a defender through high school and university and even played major league and a couple other, um, you know, exhibition yeah, leagues yeah. and stuff. But, you know, I could have made it, could have made it. You but know. Chief, you know, ultimately what it comes down to. What was your, what was your number? What was your jersey? I mean, my, if number, you... my number was three. Okay, all right. My number was three. I was going to say, you know, if you, certain <laughs> numbers, you know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Just... No, it's number three. Okay. It's number three. <laughs> But, you know, um, I think that my calling was, was I, I, up until college, thought that, you know, I actually could do this through football. But then, you know, I started to really put things into perspective, hmm. you know, looking at where I was at that time and what it would take to get to that level and looking at what else was happening in front of me. And I said, boy, it makes sense. I was focused on this academic thing and get it out of the way, you know. So I'd, I'd finished my degree in accounts and international business, you know, with first class, which, you know, was happy. I was Brilliant. happy about because Brilliant. it was so rough. Brilliant. It's so rough. And, you know, again, I say UTEC was a defining year, defining period for me hmm. because I got um, a scholarship. I got the Scotia Foundation scholarship in my second year, hmm. right? And up until that time, I, I think I took student loan my first year. Right. And I was in the process of taking a second student loan for the and second year. And I got that scholarship. Brilliant. That was the most prestigious scholarship in the university at the time. Right. I only gave two persons. So it was me and my other brethren oh, was on hall at the time that nice. got those scholarships. And, you know, that was, that was, again, saying to me, you're doing the right thing. That's you right. made the right decisions right. and keep focusing on this and walk your way through. And, you know, I give thanks to Scotia, by the way, for that. Yes. You know, really helped me put through and put things into perspective and, you know, um, see my way through. And at the end of it all, um, I started to think, you know, what would my career be? Because I then started to learn more about myself. Because hmm. at that time, remember now, I'm still far away from my hometown. That's right. You know, in a compound. I'm in Kingston now, trying to pursue this education and uplifting the life and you know doing different things and learning and earning and you know i started now realizing that i had a more creative mindset hmm. than a numbers and which is office. interesting considering your majors exactly yeah. so yeah. i finished that went into corporate and started working i worked at um price waterhouse coopers which is an auditing firm right. well renowned um as a result of a job fair that was at UTEC, 
the year that we were good. They have job fairs at the end of each school right? year. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they actually came there with Pete Marr with a couple of the other auditing and accounting firms. So I went there and, you know, a few of us got in an internship. And I was there for about a year, I believe. You know, very, 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 very good experience yeah. and exposure and learning things, you know, at another um, scale and, you know, application in that what we learned we were now putting into practice. I enjoyed it. Yeah. The challenge is I found myself conflicting in, you know, what it is I wanted to do. Mm. And because I didn't have a home in Kingston, I still had to be renting. And as an intern, you know, it wasn't really being paid that right. much. So of course. Yeah, yeah. the take home at the end of the day, you know, left a lot, <laughs> you know, to be a desired. lot to be desired. Yeah. So yeah. I really had to ask some serious questions. You know, what do you, you know, how do you make this work? And it was out of the blue, a colleague who had left uh, KP, who had left um, Pricewaterhouse. Pricewaterhouse Coopers, mm -hmm. had gone into the investment bank, which was at the time during Bunting and Golding. Right. So... She told me of an opening there in internal audit. And I said, okay, since I'm in an auditing firm, internal audit. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Let's see. Boom, applied and I got the job. So went over and that was now my first introduction into the financial sector. Gotcha. Right. And being around the, the smart minds and the, I mean, I, I was really around some geniuses mm. while I was at that, that company. I can tell you, it was no joke. It was yeah. a really robust institution with some brilliant minds. And um, the environment was one that was quite, um, it was quite, you know, it, 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 it welcomed learning. It welcomed um, questions mm. and um, a better great understanding for your yeah, advancement. Man. Exactly, because yeah. you could just walk to, you know, the, the the treasurer and you know how this how this work. You know, you walk to the 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 um, CEO and you say, you know, what's going on here? You know, and yeah, you get a better appreciation for the space. In that time, I then decided, you know, I want to do finance. I want to get into finance. You know, so I started my MBA in finance. Oh, look at you. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize this. <laughs> at Mona School of Business, yes. And it was through that job that I actually was able to, to, to afford paying for that MBA because the program at the time, I think, was about 1.8 mil or 1.5. Per mil. year. And, or per and, term. No, I think <laughs> <laughs> because it was an 18 month. It was an 18 month. Program. No, it was. 18 or 24 month course, right? But the entire fee, I think it was about 1.5. It was a, <sighs> remember some kind of little old, you say, a little bit back. I mean, so, you know, we're not that far apart. <laughs> <laughs> so careful how you talk. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so I mean, at that time, you know, it was a struggle to find that money up of front. Course, you know, I didn't have course. a huge savings account or assets or anything that right. I could then sell to, you know, do this. So I would either put myself in debt, which I found myself, you know, quite a few times still. <laughs> yeah, it's a little oh, things that, that we'll have to deal with in That's life, right. you know, but... It's a part um, of the risk. It's the realities. Yeah, yeah. It's the realities of what we have to deal with in life. And um, coming out of a background that wasn't endowed with, you know, mm. um, a lot of liquidity or um, resources that right. were easily converted to cash, you know, my family is always trying to figure it out and make things happen, you know. So I managed to pay for that through some um, shares I had bought in the company. And it just so Brilliant. happened at the time that, you know, those com those shares were part of an employment, uh, employee share option plan. Right. And um, those had matured by the time I was supposed to leave DB and it was about three and a half years. And I could then, you know, offload and, you know, cover mm. some of that tuition nice and done. finish up my MBA. And after finishing my MBA, you know, I said, you know, at that time, I had moved from audit within the company into um, um, invest, being an, uh, sorry, a financial analyst. Mm. You know, so I was now more on the Growing numbers and, and yeah, yeah. putting forward, you know, recommendations and stocks, looking at stocks and, you know, no, analyzing stocks No, but chief, I need to come to you to sit down and, and discuss the market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And listen, I, I was so... You know, into it, you know, yeah. getting the rhythm of this thing, learning the trading platforms and getting... Because my next step at that time was going on to the, the, the platform, of trading, course. you know. yeah. And 
again, you know, looking at what was in front of me and looking at how that market in itself was structured, you know, traders weren't that common, meaning it wasn't a common space. The right. top traders got the jobs. Right. And you had to have that experience, the exposure, and the connections to really mm -hmm. get on the board, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless you're going to just Especially do a little Especially that last part. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not going to just sit and feel like, right. oh, because you're qualified, you're going to get there, you right. know? So I was then looking at time and everything, always assessing in my mind, you know, is this what you want to subject mm -hmm. yourself to at this moment in time? Right. And I thought, no. I said, there's more that I could gain out of my skill sets right now. And I don't know if this is worth waiting and worth the time. So an opportunity came with Red Stripe. At the time, was owned by Diageo. And a friend who I'd met in my MBAs who was working at Diageo mm. um, invited me to, to, to apply, you know, big up Claudette. <laughs> you know? um, and I went and applied and I got the job as a commercial analyst. So I would work with the sales team and the marketing team you know, looking at sales, looking at the, the, the numbers, the finances. And, you know, we do, you know, we looked at devising strategies and coming up with commercial plans and initiatives to drive sales and drive volume, drive profitability throughout the, the portfolio of brands. But it sounds like you are so. brilliant in that space. How <laughs> does one go from growing and moving up very nicely, it sounds like, in the world of finance, in corporate how do you make a decision to put that life one side and go back to corporate yeah. country? Right. So, you know, so much has happened since where, you know, Red Stripe was because I went on to working with Lascelles. I went on working with um, the local distributor, um, Consumer Brands Limited, which is now owned by Grace Kennedy. Right. They were the distributors for Procter and Gamble and right. some other um, brands in Jamaica, and in all of these, you know, working with these global entities and you know, being exposed to all these um, areas of business and doing things and even being underground. I said, but looking when I go back home, what is happening there? And we have the land, we have the labor, mm -hmm. we might not have the capital. And those are the three factors, you know, productivity. You That's know, right. You, know, you, you, you can't have productivity without those three, you right. know. We have the land, we have the labor, we just don't have the capital. And I'm right. saying, you know, there are ways you can bring capital. You can raise capital. And raise capital. Yeah. It's, it's, way, it's how you do it. Right. I say, but all my skill sets, I'm sure I can contribute something here to benefit my community, my people for the good. And I'm thinking, but why stop there? Because, you know, this is so much bigger than just land. Right. It's so much bigger than just um, money. It's legacy. You know, it's a legacy. It's legacy. You know, it's for the born and the unborn, mm. you know. Um, I grew up seeing my Uncle Melville, who was a deputy, deputy um, colonel in years gone by, stand up and represent this on so many platforms, right? right? And I... I heard it, but I couldn't really comprehend it, right. you know? Yes. But now having the understanding I have and the appreciation I have, I have to give maximum respect and love yes. to Uncle Melvin Curry, who really put him heart and him soul out there fighting yeah. for the maroon and defending the territory and defending the lands, yeah. right? Because the, the legacy doesn't end here. That's right. You know, for many who have not read it, you can go and look at the treaty. You know, there's a copy that was um, reviewed by the Harvard... Uh, law school, I believe. Okay. Um, it's not the it's not the true treaty, but it's as close as you'll get. Okay. Right. But the interpretations and the understandings from it, it's something one should understand because people think the treaty is what gave us freedom. No, we did not get freedom because of a treaty. Our freedom existed before that. What we were yes. defending is the rights and the land. That's, That's right. what the war was about. Yes. Right. Yes. Our freedom and our sovereignty did not come by that treaty. That's right. Right? The treaty was a treaty of peace and friendship to restore calm to the land so that commerce would resume. That's essentially what it was. That's right. That's right. You know who I am very sorry for? Tell me. Your Minister of Finance. <laughs>
You know why? Tell me why. Because I wouldn't want to have to work under you as a finance Listen, man. let me tell you something, right? Let me tell you something. <laughs> we, as a, as a state, have suffered, right? We've suffered a lot um, through the misappropriations and um, negligence of yes. others, right? Credibility is a big issue for us. For the right. human race. <laughs> no, but it, no, You're chief. Right. You're right. You're it right. is. It is a big issue. Yeah. And um, I think how we've come to find our state of affairs and, you know, you'd have seen some, announce some you know, announcements I would have made subsequent to that. You know, um, it begs a lot of attention that's now needed to be placed on right. how we structure our government. That's right. right. Because accountability is prime. Our, and, and my people will be true to keep you accountable when it is, let me say this, let me say this clearly, because I don't want to be leaving any um, lines crossed. We do need healing. We all do need healing. Mm. I've identified that my community needs a lot of healing. Mm. And when I say my community, I'm talking a kompong. Yes. I'm also talking adjoining districts. A lot of them need healing, right? Some of our people have fallen far from the tree and we need to pull them back in, yeah. right? Um, accountability is a big challenge for us yes. and we're keen on fixing that, right? People will invest when they see there's trust, there's accountability, um, there's openness, transparency, right? Yeah. right? I've done as much to try and bring that forward, right? My government is in place and I have people who I've chosen and given responsibilities, charted with rights to move their different agendas to developing our communities and developing our state. Nothing is ever perfect, right? right. There's the forming, there's the storming, and there's the norming, oh. and then everything settles, right? A word. We're a government and we're not immune to that. Yes. So. As we fix our community, we fix our people because our people are our community, right? So I welcome challenges because if without challenges, I wouldn't be who I am today, right. you know? So everything that I've came upon in my life has only given me the opportunity to show me how strong I can be. Mm. And I've taken them on and I've taken on this responsibility knowing that challenges will come my way. But I know that the Almighty, the ancestors, protect and guide me and the things I do are not frivolous things mm. they're not being driven by anyone else's agenda other than me wanting better for my people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my legacy mm. this is my yard you know mm. nothing now to change that me now circle nowhere else it's interesting that you mention your legacy because I was going to ask you what would that seven-year-old boy who just lost his father, who is now mindful of his mother and his three siblings. Four, actually. Or his, his four siblings. siblings. What would that seven-year-old boy say to the now chief, Richard Curry? What would that seven-year-old boy say? Hmm. I think he would say, keep pushing, mm. keep pushing, because I feel like I'm a true manifester and I feel like sometimes I scare myself, I see things and a lot of the things I've seen have now manifested and I see other things that, you know, send chills, you know, through my body. Yes. Because we're living in a truly serious time right now. That's right. And for me, it's important that people see me for who I am because I portray not who others may think I am. Mm -hmm. To do that, it first means dropping the guard because everybody's now walking around with a lot of yes yes and they have a reason to yes you know but unity is key 
and that will come with some compromise. Mm -hmm. We cannot avoid compromises. We cannot avoid, not now. Yeah. We cannot avoid it. We have to compromise. Yeah. What does the now Chief Richard Curry say to the next generation of Maroons who are coming up? Know your history. That part. Understand who you are. Don't let nobody tell you who you are. Go do your homework. Mm -hmm. Understand the true meaning of identity. Mm. Because only through your identity will you recognize true freedom. Mm -hmm. mm. So, take everything that comes, absorb it, but try not to make it your gospel. A word. Oh, wow. Absorb as much as you can. Be the sponge. Just absorb mm -hmm. it. But let it not be your gospel. Mm -hmm. It just culminates into what your truth will be. A whole word. Yeah. A whole word. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the importance of commerce, of capital, of advancing the state. Um, let's talk a bit about the ventures that you guys are doing because I know I saw the launch of the water. I know that soon I'm going to be driving a tractor down there when I take up my residence because, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't know no, why you're laughing, lovely. you know. Of course, you come know, on. You know, I'm ready. No, let me tell you now. All right, so you don't <laughs> see the water project, right? It's yes. a private venture. And what we're trying to do is um, utilize the brand to generate income for the community because yes. we have a lot of springs down there. Accessing the springs are a problem because it takes a lot of money to cut roads. It takes a lot of in, uh, money to invest in equipment and machinery to set up water plants and all these things. But to do that, we've engineered how we can use the brand to generate income using a spring from Portland, still a maroon spring, to generate income that would then go towards putting in our infrastructure, putting in our water plant and providing money towards the government's um, kitty to help, you know, administer its business around the state. Yeah. Um, we're also looking at our tours, which is one of our major um, income generation, income generating um, um, ventures. You know, tours are um, across the, the entire terrain. You know, there are many private groups who do tours um, across the cockpit country, but within the territory, and particularly a compound, right? We have an organized um, tour body. So we do a village tour, we do a camping tour. Um, we do a bird, um, I'm coming. A bird trail. I'm, you know, I'm on my way, actually. Hiking tour. If you don't mind shop and drive, we'll leave yours to go right Yeah, here, so. yeah, yeah. We have bonfire ceremonies. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of different um, Love that. activities that we do at different times throughout the year. Right. Um, but we do have ongoing tours in the community, and we're working on putting out the new look um, uh, schedule of tours yes. that will be available to the public, right? So look out for that, and I should certainly no, no, be inviting I'll come and test it out oh, first, of course, and of then course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'll be inviting you specifically, Ready. right, to help, um, you know, help us open um, our new um, exploits in these areas. Mm -hmm. You know, wellness is a big thing for us. You know, the herbs, you know, the the bush medicine, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's a fluid thing. You know, yes, so. Man. We want to provide a platform where our artisans, our people can showcase their skill sets, their talents, you know, our tradesmen, you know, who build all these necklaces and all, you know. Yeah. There's so many talented people in the community. Mm -hmm. Bringing people to the space is how we then plan to, you know, create a, 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 a circular economy. That's right. You know, um, there's... Agriculture, which is a big thing, you know, for us in the hills, is how we we live. You know, That's everybody right. have a little piece of plant with them, a plant of something. You know, I want to go deeper. Um, I want to go into, you know, getting to the end product, the value added. You know, agro processing, exporting, um, food security is a big thing, by the way. Um, I think we all should be paying attention to, Absolutely. you know, getting as much investment as we can right now behind securing mm. our food supply. Mm. So, um, you know, getting into food and the climate that we have there, you know, it's much more enticing to grow certain types of food. So I think, um, you know, 
all of what we've been doing right now is getting the supporting pillars in place, cutting roads, accessing the farmlands, getting water back into the community, right. you know, all big initiatives. You know, we have some horses which were donated by, you know, Amazing. Mr. Mary. Give thanks again, Buja Bantan, for your help mm. with the community. You know, um, it, it, it keeps getting better. Yes. And I'm so grateful for all the assistance, all the persons who have contributed to the GoFundMe link, um, projects by Chief, Chief Curry. Um, you know, we are maintaining our promise, you know, to uplift our people, restore pride, right, in the nation, um, develop our infrastructure, and become economically independent mm. as true sovereigns are mm -hmm. supposed to be. Like royalty. I couldn't <laughs> help that. You know, that came right to my head as you said that. Once you mentioned the true sovereign. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to ask you, if you were to give me your top three life hacks, right? So these are the three things that if you follow these things, you go right in life. Now for your Sajikor life hacks. What would your top three life hacks be? Learning to forgive and move on. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Learning to forgive and move on. Um, not easy. Not easy. Because the first part of that is, is accepting. You know? And we deny ourselves of the great learnings behind acceptance. So when you accept something for what it is, then you start to actually learn Absolutely. from what is there but then you forgive and you move on right um the other one i would say is do what makes you happy you know if it's exercising if it's running if it's singing if it's dancing if it's playing ball do what makes you happy yeah. you know don't make nobody else dictate that for you okay. right and if you're in if you're doing what you do and it's not making you happy then it means the vibration or where you're at is not where you're supposed to be. You need adjusting. Yeah, yeah. needs adjusting. Yeah. Right. And the other one I would say is trust in the supreme. Because guess what? He always said it that I would never leave you, right? Nor forsake you. He would never leave you, right? Trust in him because he's always there with you. So meditation is a thing I do. And in meditating is how I actually tune in. And it brings me the direction and the guidance that I need. I ask the question and it's answered. Absolutely. So get back in tune with yourself. Go away in silence. Go sit in silence. Close your eyes. Inhale and exhale. Forget about it. Whatever is bothering you, accept it. Let it be. Don't question it. Don't argue with it. You will see the answers start to unfold. The path to which you should walk starts becoming clearer. And this is where growth actually begins. So stick to that. And I think you'll be a much better person than you were yesterday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our guest pastor, our <laughs> sermon today, Chief Richard Curry. Oh, that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. That was brilliant. I thank you for that big time. This is the MasterCard Priceless Moment. Real quick game, putting you on the spot here. I know you're never ready for this, but it's okay. This is what we do. This is what we do. I'm going to throw a word to you. Any word that I say, you have to tell me a song with that word in there. You have to sing that line because oh I goodness. heard <laughs> that along with football, you may be double with a little bit of, you know, what? Actually, I heard you're horrible with music. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it. I'm going to say, boy, you get scammed. Boy, you get scammed. Somebody trick you. <laughs> I actually think one of your Monroe brothers tried to set it up. Oh, so, boy, oh, would you boy, like to boy. start or should I start? You have to, you can throw a word to me too, you know, okay. and then I have food, right. but I'm quick on the draw. All right. So, all right. Actually, let's say age before beauty. So you first. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I say a word. Choose and... any word. All right. Butterfly. Butterfly. Um, 
um, what's that Mariah Carey song? Um, give me your love, give me your love. Oh, no, 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 that's the album. <laughs> Shoot. Um, oh, no, why do you have to say Butterfly? <laughs> Which song are you Butterfly? Mean spread your wings and prepare to oh, fly. You could so be I can get that come point. a butterfly. I'll get that point, oh, thank you. Oh, spread your wings. <laughs> Actually, you gave it to me, thank you. Wait, see, I said, I said Mariah. I you gave you the clue. All right, we split that one in half, Chief. We split that one in half. All right, I'm going to give you um, easy love. Jano. <laughs> you said Jano on the event. Love to love to love you. Love ya, love ya. Ooh. Ooh. Love to love to love you. Hey, oh, good one. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like very typical and sing I will always love you, but that was oh, really good. No, no. Okay, your turn. Don't All give right. me nothing hard. All right, <laughs> All right let's see. Um, Valley. Through the hills and valleys too. Don't let them fool all you. Right, Don't right. believe for a minute that they, they are with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. Yeah, I yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah, right. Yeah, right. all right. Let me give you your one. Final one. I'm going to give you. Hmm. Let's see. How about. Ja. If Ja is standing by my side, then why should I be afraid of, of the, the pestilence, pestilence that crawls by night? Bless, bless, oh, bless. Thank yes. you so much. Thank it was so me. lovely to spend time with you. It pleasure. really was insightful. I'm inspired. And I am coming up to take up my residence. So Please. we're coming down there for carve out my plot. Yeah, man, you should. You should. Yeah. And, um, you know, our 6th of January celebration is coming up. It's mm -hmm. our annual um, calendar, you know, event, which we celebrate the birth of Kojo, our, our captain who, you know, led us into victory in that war. And also celebrating the signing of the treaty, which was yes. actually signed on March, mm -hmm. March the 1st. Yeah. But we used the January 6th period to celebrate both. Um, so, looking at that time that's coming up, I'm going to invite you I'll to come there. up and, you know, have I will a, be there. You know, indulge yourself in the culture mm -hmm. for a day. So, I thank might you never again. leave. I, for me, I will be in heaven. No problem. My people who know me, know me, you know. You'll have a lot of caretakers, I can tell you that. Ah, <laughs> head back. See you. <laughs> See you. Know oh, that. Chief, thank Take you care, so man. much. Thank it's you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you for thank having you. me. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys was brought to you in partnership with Sagicor and Mastercard. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life. <laughs>